my personal opinion of murals are that they're supposed to tell a story. That's, I think, the most interesting thing is that you can kind of look at something and it doesn't have any words, but you can actually understand what's going on. And I think that there's a power in that. And so me doing the same thing, I felt like I wanted to document the story of the mission. I'm from Cleveland, Ohio. I just was frustrated with the environment. I knew I wanted to be an artist. I didn't know really what kind of artist other than the fact I wanted to be like a illustrator. I wanted to draw and get paid to draw. It's the only thing I knew. But I felt like Ohio was kind of suffocating. I also felt like there was a lot of racism there. And uh, I just felt out of place. I just felt like it wasn't my spot. In my head, uh, my limited experience with uh, San Francisco and California, the only thing I knew was that it was the one place in America where you're more than likely you weren't gonna get discriminated against. So I moved to San Francisco. One of the first jobs that I got, they made primarily children's educational software. But the cool thing was, was they were built on licensed characters. And I would come home and I would uh, kind of take these ideas and express some kind of drama that was going on uh, in my life at the time. But I would distill it through these kind of cliche cartoon elements that I defined as cartoon literalism. So I laid it all out there. I said, okay, bears mean love. Bears can be super cute or bears can be grizzly bears, super dangerous, much like love, right? It, it, it can be really wonderful or it can be really painful. Uh, cats, I wanna always uh, consider them ultimate desire, dependent on what they wanna do. Dogs were always a symbol of laziness and relaxation. So when you have all these buildings, you have all these cartoon characters, they're all interacting with each other, they're all being literal with some kind of action, you can all read it as a big sentence. And so that is like the genesis of cartoon literalism, how it was created and how it was used way back in the day. The Mission is one of the first places that I lived when I moved into San Francisco. I remember back then was an overwhelming injection of culture, full of all this spirit, full of all these colors, all this art everywhere. When I started putting my art out there, uh, it was not easy for me. And rightfully so, it's a community that's been under threat by a lot of gentrification. The more spots that I actually have in the mission, I started to see as it becoming a responsibility to make these, these walls that people walk by have a lot more of a voice, have a lot more of a responsibility of engagement in the community to tell a story. But I wanted to do it in a way that really engaged people. I wanted to make it to where it was a resource for the community, for visitors, all understanding uh, what's going on at this point in time in the mission. Eventually, you create this language that then all of a sudden has this power where you can say whatever you want. And as long as it's disguised with the cloak of a cartoon, people won't take it 100% seriously. But it doesn't mean that they're not going to get a message sent to them. And there's a power in that. Because then you can really express yourself and kind of throw these things that exist right on the edge of offending people, uh, but not. And that's the thing, you know, really what I wanted to do is I wanted to create this art that when people saw it, they're like, ah, oh, I get that. It makes them receptive uh, to this message. We're here at the corner of Bryant and 20th Street in the Mission District. The mural behind me, the disruption, talks about the community and what's happened over the past 10 years. I think like one of the most important parts uh, of this mural is uh, uh, this section right here, which really talks about uh, the death of Alex Nieto. Gentrification is a huge thing in the mission and gentrification is always kind of connected to housing. But in this situation, um, gentrification was connected to a death. And there's a lot of people that now pay a lot of money for all these houses, so they have huge expectations. He was wearing a 49ers jacket. He was eating a burrito up there. Two men, gentlemen called the cops on him. The cops showed up and shot him. I wanted to have this ridiculous contrast uh, because we all know that that couldn't possibly be true. Of course, like we all get uh, how this should have never happened just because how ridiculous these statements are. In this situation, I feel like there's not a person in San Francisco uh, that hasn't come and gone to a coffee shop and saw a line outside the door. I felt like this was an opportunity to try to be able to show who was at the end of this line. 
what this connects to in a larger way is this idea that, that these adults waiting in line uh, have all this time to waste on this frivolous thing as getting coffee. And then alternatively, we have this line right here, which is a lot shorter, which is actually filled with more people of color, but actually waiting in line for something super important. I just wanted to kind of show the, the contrast of populations in San Francisco. I feel street art is now ubiquitous, it's very popular, it's everywhere. I will always kind of be advocating for the tradition, but at the same time, we can still tell stories, but we can have an updated aesthetic that really allows people to kind of be attracted to it and open up to, uh, to its lessons and its messages.